okay guys so now let's start for today's session right so this week uh, there is no much theory part right so from theory perspective we will only cover that uh, gateway load balancer right as i said that uh, while covering that classic load balancer network load balancer and the application load balancers that uh, we will cover that gateway load balancer later right the reason was that because that gateway load balancer is used for that third party devices while that network load balancers, application load balancers, or the outdated classical load balancers. These load balancers we covered, these were used for that AWS services, right? When we have to manage the traffic on AWS services, right? For that AWS instances, uh, for that we were using that load balancers. So now when I'm saying that we will cover that gateway load balancers, so that means we will cover and we will deploy any third party device right so as we discussed uh last week right so we will deploy a follow all to firewall on the cloud right so when i says that uh we will deploy a firewall right so i will cover a uh, two three uh live scenarios uh that how generally organizations uh, deploy the firewall and how generally they design uh the cloud environment uh, with that firewall right so Two or three times, uh, I will deploy that firewall, right? With the different different scenarios. Uh, just understand that if you have any concerns, let me know, right? Uh, we will uh, sort it out at same point. After that, because now I will say is that the basics part are completed. So now we will uh, mostly work on the designing stuff, right? So uh, we will whenever we will deploy any services or whenever now we will put any security controls, right? So I, I will tell you that, okay, this is the designs and these things which we have already covered, right? So I will tell you that and I will let you know that how to deploy uh, that control, how to configure that. But for that backend designs, which we have already covered, you have to and do your hands dirty, right? So now let's uh, discuss uh, our first design right so in that first design what we will do we will create one vpc right so that will be our basic design right so in that basic design what we will do we will create a uh, three availability zones right one availability zone for my public services or public resources, right? One I will create for my private uh, services or private instances, right? And one availability zone I will create for my management, right? Then what we will do as we know that to connect to any of the VPC, to connect to any of the VPC, what we do, we create one internet gateway, right? And that internet gateway connects to internet and through that we are accessing. So in our first design, what we will do, we will create one Palo Alto, right? So we will deploy that Palo Alto, that Palo Alto we will deploy in management uh, availability zone, right? Because whenever we have we have to access any of the network device or any of the security device, right? So we configure one management link through that we are accessing that, right? So we will deploy one Palo Alto in management availability zone, right? So this will be our firewall. So one NIC, I will, I will, by default, whenever we deploy, right, there is a one network interface, right? So that is connected with the management interface, management availability zone. So as I have to connect to that private uh, availability zone with that firewall, I have to connect a uh, public availability zone with that firewall. So as you know that we can create a elastic network interfaces, right? So one elastic network interface, I will uh, con create and connect with that public availability zone. One elastic network interface, I will create for a private availability zone and connect with that Palo Alto, 
right then we will do a routing right so how it will go to that internet gateway whether it will go through that management interface or whether it will go through that public interface right so that we will design so generally we will uh, allow the connectivity over the internet for my public eni and for management one management one we will use to access our palo alto firewall right so that will be used uh, for our control plane accesses right for our, our firewall patches updates for upgrades right we will use uh, this management interfaces right however for my dynamic net uh, whenever my database or my any ec2 instance has to access uh, to the internet services through that palo alto firewall right then it will send request to uh, private eni to palo alto then it will uh, check the policies after policies it will check that nat and after nat that through that routing it will go through that uh, pub public eni to my igw right so this will be our first design right then in that second design we will uh, create a little bit complex thing like with that same design we have one palo alto right and we we will create palo alto in failover right so we have a two separate palo altos in two different instances right i have created a public eni for here one private eni for here right so in case of this ec2 instance down right or this uh, palo alto goes down so how AWS will automatically switch my network and virtual network interfaces, my elastic network interfaces from this instance to this instance, right? So we will cover this, right? That how my elastic network interfaces, which I have manually configured, right? Because when we will launch Palo Alto, there will be only one NIC that is for a management NIC, right? So how my public network interface and the private network interface, not on the Palo Alto level that we are creating on the AWS level. So how that AWS actually switch that uh, network interfaces from my primary to secondary one, right? This one. So these two practicals we will cover today, right? So tomorrow we will create a uh, one complex design. Right. So that design generally organizations deploy in their uh, each region. So when I'm saying that uh, from organizations perspective, so what we will create, we will create one security VPC. Right. Here I will have all my firewalls, right. My DLP solutions, my uh, proxy, web proxy services, right. So whatever the antiviruses or whatever the security solutions I have, I will deploy, we will deploy that in security VPC. Then we will connect this VPC with my production VPC. We have production DC, whatever you said. Here I will have all my project uh, servers, right? Like my domain controllers, my uh, coding servers, where we deploy all our source codes or whatever the production applications they are running, right? So what if let's suppose I have 18 projects in uh, my US region, which are running, right? Or the 18 project teams, which are working on the cloud. So all their 18 servers will be in my product uh, cloud production data center, right? DC or then I will create one more VPC. That VPC is uh, for my front end uh, APIs or applications. Like if I, this is my on prem environment, right? So all the users are connecting to my this VPC where I have a servers, or I will say that this is my client VPC or a non prod VPC, whatever you want to say, right? So I, we will create one more VPC here. Then this VPC and this VPC will be interconnect with that TGW, right? Or if we can create one more VPC, that all three will be connected to that TGW to 
in for internal connectivity they will communicate through that tgw but wherever they have to send a request to the internet right or if somebody has to access that request from internet to these services then we will deploy one firewall here so they all will send that request to that firewall right through that firewall it will process that inbound and outbound traffic for that apc right and last uh, design which we will cover uh, that will be a little bit new for us because in that third design we already know that what is tgw what is attachments but still we will cover that and the in the last design we will cover gateway load balancer in that gateway load balancer we will deploy one firewall behind that gateway load balancers right so so that in case if I have to deploy one firewall in one availability zone, one firewall in one availability zone for, to manage a HA, right? Or if we have to deploy firewalls in active, active, right? Then how that gateway load balancer will manage that traffic, right? So uh, these four designs we will cover in these two classes. So let's move on now what we i will do i will create uh, one vpc that that is very basic design right so this is uh for actually just a basic deployment of firewall so that you guys can understand that how we deploy that understand the basic steps so most of the concepts we already know right what is vpc what is subnet what is eni what is uh, associates uh, subnet associates there will be a few new features right that i will tell you uh, that we are using while deploying any third party tool right so this is my security vpc this is my security vpc so here i will create three subnets my this will be my private subnet that private subnet will be let's that will be my private subnet this will be my management subnet and this will be my public subnet right so let's say we will use a management ip uh, 10.0.0.0 slash 24 right and for my public i will use 10.0.1.0 slash 24 and for private one i will use 10.0.2.0 slash 24 right and this my security vpc is a subnet of 10.0.0.0 slash 16 as you know that the we can use that subnet from slash 16 to slash 28 right so i am using that security vpc for that this this will be my management subnet this will be my private subnet this will be my public subnet right then we will uh, deploy one firewall in a management interface then again we will uh, jump to this design right so right now in my first step what i am going to do i am going to create one vpc then I am going to create these three availability zones, right? So now let's jump. Right. guys in between if you have any concerns right so just uh, raise that same point right let's uh, i am going to create vpc security vpc and the network i am going to assign is 10.0.0.0/16 
I will go with that default, will not go with that dedicated one. Right. My security VPC is created. Let's do one thing. Uh, VPC name, security VPC, subnets, what I am going to use, management one, I am using 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Public one, I will use 10.0.1.0 slash 24. And private one, I will use 10.0.2.0 slash 24. So I have created a VPC. Now I will jump to subnets. Right. So let's select on which VPC I want to create that subnet. So I selected my security VPC, right? So my security VPC is 10.0.0.0 slash 16 subnet. So let's create that subnet. My first will be management subnet, right? So Then first we feed ten dot zero dot zero dot zero slash twenty four name management subnet that is okay. Now my public subnet. Let's suppose I am going to give. 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Name is fine. Private subnet. I'm giving that 10.0.2.0 zero slash 24 done i have created three subnets okay this is my management subnet public subnet and private subnet right so now we already know right that whenever we create any vpc right so till now what we have did we created one VPC, right? 10.00, then we created three availability zones or three subnets. But and how they will go to internet until we will not create IGW, right? Remember, whenever we first to send any traffic to outside or to access that resources within that VPC, that IGW should be created. And after creating that IGW, you have to attach that IGW to that VPC until you, after creating, if you will not attach that IGW to that VPC, you will face problem. And another thing you need to remember that one IGW can be attached to only one VPC, right? So as you cannot share one IGW with the two different VPCs. So, my, I have created PPC, I have created subnets. So now I'm going to create IGW. So let's security internet gateway, right? So I have created that security 
gateway. Now I have to attach this to my security VPC. So I am attaching to my security VPC. Done. So Manpreet, Manpreet just you have created subnets in the three different AZ or single AZ? So I have created in, let me see, mm -hmm. we can create in any of the AZ. So any of I the AZ, have, na? ABC, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Only single AZ you have yes. created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So but we, we can create in the three three different AZ under yeah. the the Yeah, why it will not create any problem? Because my default root is 10.0.0 slash 16, right? So they all will be covered that at local root. So they can communicate within that VPC until I will not okay. put any problem. So now I created one routing table. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have created IGW. So after creating IGW, now I have to tell them that which uh, availability zone or which subnet should go to internet and which one should not go to internet, right? So now let's create a routing table. Okay, one second. Let's add all the names. Default security route table. Yeah, this is this was the default routing table for my security VPC, right? So if I will see that. It is covering all right so i can use that but let's suppose uh this is our first time so we will create two separate routing table this one i will create my public see you are it why okay so i am creating one uh, security public routing table and i am selecting this for security vpc Right now, I am creating one more security private routing table and okay. Guys, uh, if here where I can draw that so that there is no confusion. One second, MS Paint. dot zero dot zero dot zero slash 16 so if this is my vpc right so what i did i created three availability zones this one was my management this one was my public and this one was my private uh, availability zone so for my management one i have given uh, ip 0, 0 0.0 slash 24 for my public one i have given 1.0 slash 24 similarly for my private one i have given 2.0 slash 24 right and after that i created a one ig internet gateway here right and now we know that right for public one definitely i need route to the internet but for management one i also need a route to the internet gateway so i will for these two availability zones i will send that traffic to that internet you know that right you have a better understanding 
while configuring that firewalls that management interface is used for all the patching of that devices right for upgrades for that that is the reason i am sending that management subnet traffic as well to that internet and for that public one for private one i will not send that traffic to the internet right so now i have created two security routing tables so let's go to that public routing table right in that public routing table i go to that subnet associations that which subnets should be cover in this routing table so at it i will use my public routing table for my public subnets and for my management subnets and in the routing table i will click on edit right so i will add route for internet it should go to internet gateway for which internet gateway should go through that security gateway right so now my public routing table will cover my these two subnets my management subnet and my public subnet they will able to send to the internet traffic through this igw right but my private subnet will not able to send because private subnet is not part of my public routing table subnet association so this is my private routing table right so in that private routing table i will say is that okay so this routing table is for my private subnet done but i will not create any external routing table right because i don't want that this subnet communicate to that internet through igw right so we want that they send all the traffic to the Palo Alto, right so this part is done so another thing generally when we deploy right in vpc right we have a two types of security one is on so whenever we deploy uh, any vpc right there are two two layers of security one is on the vpc layer where we have a network acls right and then another one is on the instance level right where we will deploy that firewalls or so here uh, we will use the security groups right so let's suppose here if i will deploy that firewall so here we will deploy a security group so i have to cross verify that right if i am allowing that communication uh over that internet through my firewall so is there any road blocker for that network acls so if you are in your organization and if you are managing network acls so you have to make sure that you allow your follow all to ips uh right uh, or whatever the ports through which you want to allow, right? That should be allowed on that network ACLs. But by default, all the traffic on the VPC through that network ACL is allowed. So due to that, I do not need to worry about that. Right, so. These are my network ACLs this is for my security vpc and in this security vpc i have a three subnets right and for that three subnets all the inbound traffic and all the outbound traffic is allowed generally when we deploy in our organizations we enable the inbound traffic and in that inbound traffic we allow from our on prem public ips right that only for our on prem uh, through that our on-prem public IPs, our firewalls will be accessible because they are on the management interface with that public IP. They are accessible over that public IPs, right? So they will be only accessible through that my office or uh, public IPs, right? So you just, you can use that network ACLs, right? Okay. So now my network part is done, right? So now let's deploy firewall we have to deploy that firewall in management uh, availability zone
right so now i have to launch instance So, okay, so earlier, whenever we were launching, right? So we were picking that images from that Amazon Linux or from Windows Linux, right? So these these are all operating system. You want to launch it from Mac OS, Ubuntu, Red Hat, SUS. So from where you want to launch, right? Here, I want to launch it uh, any third party appliance. So for that, I will select more Amazon machine images. So in that Amazon machine images, which image uh, i want to launch right so i uh, here i don't want any uh operating system here i want a third party so i will select a, a marketplace ami so in that marketplace ami right so whatever dlp whatever uh web proxy whatever uh, load balancer whatever you want a uh, cs the pm any of the third party security tool which is available in that aws marketplace right so you can select it it is just like a google play store right it's you just select that which app or which product you want to install uh, on your account right select it here so i will select it here follow alto right so now these are all list of Palo Alto services uh, which are available in AWS marketplace so I can select it here right so in this I will use my BYOL bring your own license the reason of selecting this is that because let's suppose if I will go with this uh, panorama right I don't need panorama this is a management tool similarly if I will go with that threat prevention, five core security. So whenever I will launch that, right, I have to pay for that additional services, right? But if I will go with that, bring your own licenses, right? So that they will give me a very basic uh, firewall without any features, any layer seven features. So I have to use my own licenses uh, to enable that features. I, but in my scenarios, I am not going to enable uh, antivirus, uh, anti-spyware or any layer seven inspection or any remote VPNs, right? So I will go with very basic, right? So it will charge less amount. So I selected my this firewall, right? So they are saying that hardly I have to pay this amount. So I selected this. done so man please in the production environment uh, what image we generally take so uh -huh. again it's it's all depends upon uh, that uh, what features you want right so whenever we, we purchase a polo alto right so we purchase based upon that what features we want we do we never purchase any of the firewall with all the features right so if you have already dlp solutions then why you will uh, use that dlp license on the Apollo alto similarly for web one right but go first with that default features right use that in your environment then uh, customize based upon your requirement right never purchase all the features uh, in one go okay so this is the default image so that yes. you can take it okay yeah right mm -hmm. so okay. under this uh, i have could to you create... please uh, manpreet could you please show me once again which image we have selected and how many vcpus and what are the requirements for instances one could second show me one second one second security key Because so, nowadays, uh, Palo Alto released a new method of uh, licensing that is a uh, VCPU core based licensing. Okay. So, so yeah. So when I 
choose Palo Alto uh, base image that is uh, with that bring your own license, right? So this was that image I have selected, right? And with this image, uh, this is my eight CPUs and 32 gig of memory I'm using, right? And then it can be shut once again, because here I can't see uh, the... One second. Uh, let me show you one second. Right, so I selected a uh, marketplace. In marketplace, I selected a base model. Uh, base this model. this one, right? Bring your own license. Bring your own license. And again, can we check that configuration of maybe it's a specification of this thing over here at the same place? Yeah, you can select this on the Palo Alto side. But here, yeah, and number of uh, VM series in your own right? so, Yeah, you can see this, whatever. right? So what, whatever the features they are providing to you. This is the environment of this. Right, this is the usage. This is the overview. So course are not mentioned over here, but you are taking a uh, eight vCPUs in the instance. So I so, think so so when when I am selecting this right, so that AWS recommends that okay for this one right, okay. the minimum requirement for that Palo Alto is this. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sir. So this is not specifically for right. So whatever like if you will deploy that F five or Cisco right. So based upon uh, that model they will select that this is the minimum requirement if you want to increase uh, your processing power you can go uh, let right so the minimum requirement is this one right but i i can go to higher one if i have a 64 gb i can select this right 64 gb 16 uh, vcpus it will give me a better performance but again uh, as this is my lab environment right so i don't want to pay too much cost for my lab so i will go with that minimum one so i selected this uh, i created a one security key pair right so now i want to launch this firewall i want to launch this firewall in my security vpc so i selected my security vpc from subnet perspective i want to launch this in my management uh, subnet right and public ip i want it it should be enabled so that i can access this palo alto firewall and this will be my this public ip will be my management interface ip through that i will access that right so from security group perspective let's create the fw security okay so ssh i want and i want this https access right so guys, as you said that whenever we, as we already know that whenever we launch our EC2 instance, right? By default, they are giving a 20 GP of storage. So here I have to pay uh, one for my uh, instance one because now I am not using a free tier instance plus the storage, the minimum requirement to launch this firewall is 60 GB. So make sure if you will do your lab after uh, terminating your ec2 instance remove your this uh, ebs volume because this is 60 gp so you have to pay additionally for this storage as well so i launched my firewall so 
now i launched five one firewall in my management interface right so now what what i am going to do i will here my firewall is ready right my firewall is ready although i have to configure it right now parallelly uh, i will create one instance here ec2 instance here and i will send its traffic to my firewall right for a testing perspective that whenever i will send that whether its traffic is going to firewall and it is processing through policies through net and go to that internet right so i will create one ec2 instance in my private uh, availability zone with no public ip right so it will only have a private ip so one public ec2 instance i will connect it launch in public instance the reason for that is that i will access that as a my jump server this will be my jump server through that i will connect to this ec2 instance and this ec2 instance do not have any route to my internet gateway so i in this will use my private subnet right so this will use my private subnet but now i have a firewall so that firewall a trusted interface or a private uh, eni right i will create one route for my private subnet that 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0 should go to private eni and that private eni is my palo alto trust interface right and it will hit to that trust interface from that trust interface we will do all the routing and here i will create one untrust interface so Is it? Yeah, it is currently initiating. So let's launch one instance. Public EC2. I will use my security key for this one. I want to launch this in my security VPC. In security VPC, I want to launch it in my public subnet. In public subnet, yes, I want its IP from security group perspective. Let's, let's go with this uh, firewall because they have allowed this 22 and i launched it go to that instance launch one instance private ec2 I want this private EC2 to be accessible through my security key. And I want to launch it in my security VPC. In security VPC, I want it to be launched in my private subnet. And in private subnet, I don't want to give any public IP. So let's go with that default security group. done my fraud firewall is strong name let's see on public one i have a public ip okay and for private ec2 i don't have a public ip so it will be only accessible over the internet so now meanwhile our uh, firewall is installing right so what we can do we can create a enis right 
because now this firewall when i am deploying that firewall right there is a only one interface on this ec2 instance so that interface i that interface uh, i will use as a management interface right through that i will access my firewall over this public ip right but now on that firewall i want one public eni and one private eni so now let's go to network interfaces okay so this is my five one second let's see last one i think one second Thirty is my firewall IP. Yeah, last one. You're right. Firewall. Yeah, like. Firewall. done right so now i will create one more interface firewall public eni and that will connect to my firewall public interface so where is my public 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 this is in my public subnet done security group i will use this this is my public ENI public ENI so now I want one ENI for my private interface I want to launch this in my private subnet. Security group, I am using this. Okay, right. So this one, uh, when I launched my firewall, right, so this one was automatically created, right? This one is used uh, to access my firewall. However, I have now, this is, if you see, this is showing that this is already in use. So I created two more ENIs. One is for my trust interface and one is for my untrust interface, right? So I want to also give one public IP to my public ENI, right? So for that, now what I will do, I will go to that elastic IP. I want one public IP. So I allocate one public IP for my this account. So let's give the name this. ENI this is my firewall public ENI IP right and I want this to be associated with my network interface so I want to assign this to my public ENI so I assign this to my public ENI 
done. So till this, we are clear that what we are doing, right? So now what we did, we launched one firewall here. We created one EC2 instance here, right? So when we create one EC2 instance, by default, one uh, ENI is created to access that interface that was in public, right? Similarly, when we deployed one firewall, one firewall here, right? That ENI was created for uh, this availability zone so that it should be accessible, right? So this will be accessible uh, and that ENI is considered as a management ENI. Through that, we will access to our firewall from that internet, right? Then we created one ENI that will be used for my public subnet, right? This is my public ENI. And here I pick one public IP from my AWS and attach that public IP to this ENI so that it can send and it can net my traffic through this uh, ENI. And similarly, I also created one ENI for uh, my private subnet so that my private subnets can access to my private ENI, right? So two things now we have to do. In my private routing table, I have to route now the traffic to my this private ENI. First thing I have to do, and second thing earlier, what we were doing. So when this firewall, this EC2 instance was sending that traffic through this ENI. So this ENI was managing all my source and destination NAT checks. Similarly, this uh, when I'm using this ENI, right? So this ENI was managing my source and destination check. But now I have to tell to that ENI that I have my a security device which will manage my source and destination check. So you do not need to take care of my source and destination checks of my packet. So I have to disable the source and destination checks on that ENI level. Because now that NAT part will be managed through my third party device, right? So these two steps we will do. So how we will do? go to that network interface, select public ENI, go to actions, change source and destination check, right? So I have disabled that source and destination check because now this interface is connected with that firewall and my firewall will take care of my source and destination check. So this network interface should not to be worried about that. Similarly, for my private ENI, select that, go and disable the source and destination check. This one is done. Similarly, for that routing part, go to that routing table. Where is my private route? This is my private routing table. Go to that routes. For my public routing table, I have a route that for internet access, one second. Oh, sorry. This one is the default one. So this is my public one, right? So for that public one, I have a route that for all the internet traffic go to that IGW. But now for that private routing table, I will say that, okay. So whenever you have to go to that internet, you have to go to the network interface. And in that network interface, you have to go to my private ENI, right? So now my private subnet will send all the traffic to my Palo Alto private ENI. Currently, it is not a Palo Alto ENI because I have not attached with that Palo Alto. But yes, now on AWS level, I have sent uh, created a route that for all my private subnet, when they have to access to internet, they have to send that request to this private ENI. It is showing a black hole. 
because currently this private ENI is not attached with any uh, device, right? Any network device. So currently they don't have a next op address. So that is why it is showing status black hole. So as soon as my firewall will be up and this ENI will be attached, I have to verify that whether this status is showing active, right? Okay, so let's see if my firewall is now accessible. Done. is still taking time right so go to that actions monitor get instance screenshot it is showing up okay One second, where I have deployed that. I selected my security key. I will save my public key. Security private key. I extracted from that PAM file my public key and a private key. On desktop. This is my private key and what is the public IP of my firewall? Now it is accessible in behind of the screen. Yeah, let's see if it is accessible through CLI. Yes, so the default username of uh, Palo Alto is admin. My key is working or not, yes. Right, right, so let's change the password right i have to configure and after configuring i am changing the password of my username admin i am putting password
okay meanwhile what we can do jump back to our firewall here is our firewall so now let's attach that network interfaces right so i want to attach my public eni to this firewall i attached it right so now if i will see i will have a two subnets right zero was for my management and one was for my public right so now let's go and so attach that another ip as well attach network and private e and like done so now this firewall has three ips one for management interface right one for a public subnet and one for a private subnet now let's see from a routing perspective route table my private route table yes right earlier uh, it was showing that black hole because that eni was not attached with any of the layer 3 device right so there was no next stop so now it is connected to any of my palo alto so that route is fine so my private subnet will send all internet traffic to this eni and through my public eni palo alto will send all the traffic to my igw done so my password is changed so let's see okay so my firewall is now accessible let's go to that interfaces right so first of all uh, i have to configure my first interface layer 3 interface let's suppose i will select it untrust from config perspective virtual router i will use default one security zone i am creating new one so this will be my untrust zone from ip perspective i will go with uh, dhcp ip right for that interface and i selected it okay similarly this will be my trust interface the first one was untrust right yes so this one i am going to create as a trust interface config virtual router i am using default one security zone i am creating new and this will be a trust one done and from ip perspective this is my static one right so i will disable that default routing so i go with this and what additional i need to do after interfacing i have to configure that routing and netting and policy yes 
to go to that policies let's create one policy and trust to trust source will be my trust network destination will be my untrust network and action should be allowed Ideally, my firewall interface should be up. But it is not coming up, no IP addresses. So, what I will do? Let's reboot my device. Guys, I'm also taking one minute of break. Let me have a sip of water, right? So meanwhile, if you guys also want to take a break, take a two minutes of break, then we will be back. Okay, man.
okay guys i am back so meanwhile what we can do let's log into our uh, public ec2 instance Honestly, sir, I have a small question. Um, yes, please. Can, can we uh, edit the local route? Yeah, you can modify. Yeah. Okay. So we can. Um, yeah, rather than rather the, rather the, than creating two subnets, right? I can use that default subnet. Uh, sorry, default route for my internet connectivities and manual route I will create uh, for uh, that subnets which I have to route towards uh, my firewall. Mm -hmm. Why and then, please, sir, do we need to add a reverse route as well from Palo Alto to the uh, private and the public subnets? No, 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 no. It's not required. No. Okay. So... No, that's not required, sir, just because of uh, it's a stateful device, correct? Yes, right. Okay. Go to firewalls. Where is my private key? Let's see if my EC2 oh, oh. EC hyphen user. I was asked this question. Okay. Uh, let's assume uh, we do have the private subnet. Okay. Uh -huh. And and we do have DMZ and uh, WAN subnet and a different kind of uh, zone. We are calling zone. We do have uh -huh. the different zone, and every zone have the different subnet. Uh -huh. Okay. And why I'm calling this because of uh, if uh, traffic going by the locally, okay, then it could mm, make the crush for us. We would like to pass through all the traffic through the Palo Alto firewall. So we just need to target the, um, all the traffic should go by the Palo Alto firewall uh, else of local subnet, right? So uh, I honestly, I have not understand your uh, query, right? But I, let me explain you uh, that when we create a reverse routing, right? So let's suppose uh, this is my security uh, VPC, right? Here I have a different VPC, like you are saying DMZ one, right? Mm -hmm. Here I have a separate one, right? When they all are connecting uh, through that TGW to firewall, right? Then once that firewall will send that reverse uh, packet, right? Then it, on these routing tables here, I need to define the reverse routing. Right. If you are asking that same query, I have a separate uh, DMZ, separate subnets, right? For that separate one. During that, I have to create a reverse routing where I am using that TGW. So I will cover that that reverse routing uh, scenarios as well, right? So this one we are covering very basic one. Okay. So we will cover we will cover two three scenarios. Mm -hmm. So okay. right now I am on a public subnet. Right, so my public subnet was 10.0.1.0. I have connected to this EC2 instance with my this public IP. Uh, where was it? So I connected to my public EC2 instance and my public through this public IP and its private IP is 10.0.1.19. 10.0.1.19. So now I have to connect to my, from this, I have to jump to my private EC2 instance. And for private EC2 instance, my IP is 10.0.2.196. So first of all, let's see if Okay, so connectivity point of view it is saying no, but it should not be okay. I got it. Anyone has any clue that why I'm not able to connect to this 10.02196? Yeah, ICMP is not allowed, I think. Good, yes. 
So let's create ICMP for this security group. I am using that common security group, right? So firewall security group. CMP before. done so now what i have to do ssh i have to first create a key uh, let me see i am creating one file with the editor vi key i'm pasting it I am saving it with saved it. Let me see if it is added. It is added. Done. So now I am changing permission of my key file. It is, so what was the IP of my database? It is ssh space hyphen i then email then my user is ec2 hyphen user at the rate what is my ip 10.0.2.192 so now so I am now in my private uh, subnet. From private subnet, I have sent a default route to my firewall. Right. So let's see. Currently, internet is not working through my private subnet. So let's see if my firewall is up. Username was admin, password is Okay, my interfaces are up. So let me cross verify. Right, the IP address is 1.0. So this one is my public subnet. Done. And this one is 2.0. So 2 was my private. Done. So what else I have to do? Okay, I have to create one NAT here. The policy is correct. Oh, the naming is trust to untrust. Then I have to create one NAT here. NAT uh, name will be netting internet net my source will be trust my destination zone will be untrust and destination interface was my one slash one source will be any destination will be any from a translated perspective i will do a dynamic net so in dynamic net i will use my interface and in interface which one was my one slash one okay so net part is done 
then on routing side we go to that static route and the route destination will be zero 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 dot zero slash zero okay interface will be my one slash one right next route will be my ten dot zero dot one dot one this was I think my next route address let me cross verify. Yes. Done. So my routing is also completed. Let's commit it. I don't think anything else is required. Oh, let's see. Our firewall config is okay. Done. So this ten dot two dot ten dot zero dot two dot one ninety six, right? So this was my private subnet. So now from this private subnet, what I have done uh, in AWS, I have done that for my private subnet all the route should hit to my this eni and this is my follow Alto private eni so what this is doing so this is sending all the requests to my private eni which is attached to my trusted interface right so my this is my private eni right which is up so this is attached with my trust interface as soon as it hits to my third party uh, product right then you have to configure your product if it is a uh, checkpoint asa fi whatever it is right so you have to configure is as soon as it is configured so let's see uh, in the policies right if netting is working definitely netting is working so i sent uh, eight ping i think right so I sent that request. So this is now hitting to that firewall, right? After hitting to that firewall, let's see, hit count is increasing from monitoring perspective. Yes, it is accessing, right? So now let's revise what we have did. we created firstly vpc right we created one security vpc after creating vpc what we did we created three subnets what three subnets i have created one for my public one for my private and one for my management why management because here i will deploy my follow all to firewall private subnet where uh, i will deploy my applications or my of uh, servers whatever right so all these will be in my private availability zone so why created public one for my jump server right one for my jump server so that I, if I have to access to any of my private subnet, uh, EC2 instances or any of my application server or services, right? I need one jump server so that I can log into that jump server. And from that jump server, I can access to that application. Apart from that, to go to that internet, right? 
my uh, after i have created one uh, oh, this was my second section and third section i created one internet gateway and that internet gateway is attached with my public uh, availability zone right so i created one eni three en two enis i have created one public eni i have created and one private eni i have created that public eni i have attached uh, with that polo alto right uh, to send that traffic to internet and similarly one private eni i have connected uh, with the polo alto so that these all my services or the servers can send that request to polo alto right then two important points here whenever you create a public eni right if i i will not allocate one public ip to my public eni right my machine will send that request to my uh, inter, uh my polo alto Palo Alto trust interface will accept that request and when it will send to that public ENI, public ENI will not able to route that traffic to IGW because I have not assigned any public IP. So remember here you have to allocate public, public IP allocation, right? This thing you have to remember in your lab, right? And second important thing from ENI perspective you have to remember is that now your ENIs are not managing a netting source and destination net check. Now this is your firewall which will manage your source and destination net on the packet level. So you have to disable source and destination check on your public ENI and private ENI, right? Once this is completed, then for your public subnet and for your private subnet, you have to create a routing table. In that routing table, for public routing table, your internet traffic should go to IGW, right? So that when I will connect my public ENI to Palo Alto, it automatically sends that traffic to my IGW because I have a, a public route. Similarly, for your private routing table, you have to always take care that your private subnet, your, where your office organization servers or services are running, they should route to your private ENI so that they send all the requests to your firewall, right? So once you have this base ready on the AWS, right? Then after that, whatever the security, device you are deploying uh, in your environment, right? It will, uh, you have to do that again, that uh, all the configuration in terms of routing, uh, netting policies, and then it will send that request to internet, right? So this was the one basic deployment of Palo Alto. Are we clear with this? Or if we have any query with this uh, deployment, uh, yeah, Manpreet, I have a query. Yeah. Uh, so, Manpreet, actually, suppose that we have created three subnets management, public and private, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have deployed the Palo Alto in the management uh, subnet, right? Management zone, right? Mm -hmm. So, is it possible to route all the traffic if either in a private or public will go through the uh, filter? Can we apply the filter on the firewall for all the subnets? Suppose that. Uh, suppose the public subnet you know, wants to communicate with a private subnet or management subnet, right? So is it possible to route the traffic first to the firewall, right? And then it will go to the internet for, I'm talking about the public. Suppose the public user trying to access internet. So instead of sending the traffic through the internet gateway, can we apply filter first on firewall, then we'll forward it to the internet? Can we yes. do it? Yes, we, we can do that, right? That that scenario I will cover. That scenario I will cover, right? Here uh, here in this scenario, we are covering that outbound traffic, right? Mm, if right. Some, if, if, if somebody has to access my services, uh, right? They have to access that request uh, through that firewall, right? So if I have any DLP solutions or uh, any layer seven antivirus, anti-spyware policies I enabled on the firewall, that scenario I will cover. 
Okay, okay. Right. So right now I'm asking the query about this scenario. In this scenario, right? So if you have any query about that deployment part, if you are clear with that deployment part, I will uh, jump to that next scenario. Are we clear with this? Uh, it, no, uh, yeah, it's clear, Manpreet. And suppose that we have created a private ENI, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, and all the public and private subnet we are pointing towards the private ENI, right? So my question is sorry, is, sorry, is, sorry. Uh, uh, we created public and private ENIs. After that, what you said? Public and private ENI we have created on the firewall, right? Mm -hmm. So we are uh, supposed that if uh, if public or uh, private uh, subnet wants to talk with the management, we are uh, routing the traffic uh, towards the private ENI, right? No, I have created like, I have created one public ENI. I have created one private ENI. Yes, so so uh -huh. private. We are pointing the traffic from private subnet towards the. Uh, Pri if the private, 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 yeah, yeah. Suppose that somebody, someone, user sitting in private subnets wants to talk with the management uh, subnet. So the traffic use the uh, next hope uh, private ENI, right? Next hope as a private yes. ENI, right? Yes. yes. So. Uh, so suppose so my question is uh, suppose that we have a uh, we have another subnet right like private two subnet which we have created in a different region or sorry in the different uh, available AZ right and right. for that is it possible to create a separate private ENI instead of we have a single private ENI right so yeah, is it yeah, possible yeah, yeah. Yes, we because, can do it right yeah because in that firewall I have a multiple interfaces free right so just create one more. Uh, subnet one more eni and attach that eni to your polo alto right so i have a seven interfaces uh, available in this my polo alto okay yeah 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 so sub interface concept also apply here right sub interface like uh, eth 1.10 uh, uh, it's uh, like uh, like we create on the firewall right based on the vlans right eth 1.10 sub interface we create eth 1.2 right so... we create on if I am not wrong, right, then on the virtual environments, we cannot create a sub interfaces. If I am not wrong, I have to check this on the Palo Alto website, right? Because in my experience on the cloud side, I never see a virtual interfaces mm -hmm. on the firewall. I have to once cross check this on the Palo Alto website. Okay. Right. okay. Although, although I know that if I have a 14 interfaces and like now you are saying that if we are, if we want to create a 14 separate environments, right? Right. So what, right. What, what I will do, I will create a 14 ENIs and uh, attaching that 14 ENIs. I, subnets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that ENIs I will attach with uh, this interface. But here I, again, I also need to remember that. I, if I'm using which family EC2 instance I am launching because every EC2 instance has its uh, own uh, mm -hmm. capability that how many ENIs they can attach, right? If you have to attach that 14, then I think I have to go to that uh, X large family where I can attach that. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Got it, yeah. Okay, guys, so Love tell it. me quickly if you have any queries with this setup, right? Then we will jump to that HA1. Yeah, but so I have a query here in this in this only. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like in interface, uh, one slash one and one slash two. Like we have selected this CP option. So how you you you, you can you can select it manually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so in this example, like how it got mapped, you know that particular subnet. Like did we make the same thing in the uh, EC two part? So, how sorry, it picked no. the same subnet? I didn't understand. Sorry. Uh, please click on that uh, any of the interface DHCP client that option yeah yes yeah so it took that IP ten zero one that belongs to, I think public subnet right yes for private subnet private subnet no this this is a uh, public uh, okay sorry yeah public subnet okay mm -hmm. so how it pick the same subnet here in this Palo Alto so what what I yeah, did mapping we did yeah that no 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 sorry. okay let me tell you because when I uh, configured this right i first i attach a public eni right then i attached a private eni right so first interface will pick that first eni which i have attached and then what else i have attached it will pick that uh, eni yeah, that that in i where we mapped it that i think i missed it can you show me like where we did that mapping yeah. 
one second let me show you we selected uh, that instance here right and in actions go to that network settings right here i attached it so if i let's suppose if i will detach that it that interface will goes down let's suppose i will detach private eni right so now i have detached that private eni from my firewall so let's see if that interface goes down in in few minutes that interface will goes down because now right now my ping is not working right in in few minutes you will see never will hear bhai sir so my this is the way we attach uh, that eni is uh, with my firewall right so allow me 15 to 20 seconds that interface will goes down yeah anyone has any other query i i will deploy one more firewall in a ha right uh, in that if you have missed anything right you you can see that are we okay currently with this setup yeah fine thank you okay but now i am also seeing that why it is taking too much time i delete should goes down immediately come on man no constraints ah those sir can we create a one jump server option so by that jump server we want to access so in so, which zone now we will in which uh, subnet we will create a jump server in the management correct yes yeah ideally this interface this interface is not going down this should goes down we can check with the cli that could be the bit you know that command to check that interface uh, i think show interfaces that's it yes yeah, yeah. yeah. an interface what's what is the ip admin okay so show interfaces all right so interface show interface uh, maybe you can put interface name up ethernet the stretch showing up once so once let's go That's I think uh, we, we just changed from our uh, instance level, not from firewall. No, so maybe it will not down. It should down because yeah. it is now not connected with any of the ENI, right? So it should. Let's reboot it and we'll see that. Okay, guys. Meanwhile, now what we will do? Uh, in same uh setup, right? What I will do? I will create a uh, two firewalls. Uh. in ache everything will be remain same only thing what i want to show you that if let's suppose this is my uh, primary firewall right current same setup same private will go to with that everything will be same right so in fire uh, aws right so i will connect two firewall one in active one in passive so what i want to achieve with that is that here i have to create one more subnet uh, for my ha link right one more subnet for ha link so that it should be connect through ha apart from that what else i want to prove here i have a management interface for my secondary firewall here i have a management interface for my primary firewall 
I will create same setup for my public key and my same setup for my private E I right as soon as this firewall or this instance goes down this public E I and private E I should be automatically switched to this Palo Alto from they will automatically release these interfaces from this firewall and they will automatically connect to my standby which will be work as an active right so now we will do this so for that one the only change in the cloud side is that we have to now assign a role uh -huh. I have I will delete what I let me do what I will do So so I am creating uh, because earlier I was in North Virginia region, right? So uh, I am not modifying that setup because I want to see that firewall interface status why it is not goes down. So quickly, let's create one VPC. I will repeat all that steps security VPC subnet. I am using 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Oh, sorry, 16. Security VPC I have created. I will create availability zones my management subnet i will go with that 10.0.0.0 slash 24 Now I will create my HA subnet. It will be 10.0.1.0 slash 24. I will create my public subnet. Ten dot zero dot two dot zero slash twenty four, and I will create one more subnet that will be my private subnet. Ten dot zero dot p dot zero slash twenty four. So now I will create a routing table, right? I will create two route table, one security public route table. This is my security public route table and this will be my I think I missed one thing, private 
round table. While creating that public round table, I, have I selected security VPC? Anyone noticed? Yes, no, no. No. Mm, let me know I selected it, okay. So VPC I have created, subnets I have created, route table I have created. So in my public subnet, right? Let me call my management subnet and a public subnet. And in my private subnet, let me call my HA because for HA and for private subnet, I don't want to send any traffic to that internet. So these will be my private one. So I will create one IGW. Uh, internet gateway. I will attach that internet gateway with my VPC, which VPC? Security VPC. Okay, one second guys, let me see. Right, so you see uh, in that setup, I removed that private ENI from my firewall. So my interface is now showing down. So where I was, okay. So I created that IGW and after creating that IGW, I have attached, yes, this is, attached to my VPC. I have created VPC. I have created subnets. I have created routing tables. I have created IGW. So now from firewall perspective, let me launch one EC2. EA firewall. I want two firewalls in active passive, right? So I will select it here. Go to this marketplace. Follow all two. with base model. Continue. Come on. Security pair on my car. I have to again create. London security key. Hello, man. For it. Yes. Yeah, those firewall the one you are launching are they on free firewall? Sorry. The firewall the one you are launching are they on free firewall? Yeah. So in VPC, I am selecting my security VPC, security VPC, I am calling both firewalls in my management subnet. I want public IP for them. So I said, yes, create security group. 
let's go with that fw security group by default they are relying https and ssh i will launch these two okay so one second so guys meanwhile that is launching right so let me see i am i am in north virginia region right let me go to ec2 let me terminate my this setup and another important thing which i have to do is i have to release my first disassociate and release my public ip done After another thing which is charging me is my volume that 60 gb I cannot delete it until that firewall is not deployed. Okay, guys. So basically, uh, this is a VM series at Palo Alto website, right? Here, they have mentioned the setup that what, what are the setups I have to follow, right? So I am using uh, this. So active press. So if you will go for a checkpoint, right? So for that checkpoint, they have a separate uh, role policies requirement. Similarly for Palo Alto, they have a separate one, right? So if you will go to their requirement, right? So here they have mentioned that once you have to move your interfaces one from one primary to secondary. So these roles and permissions should be attached. Attached network interface, described network interface, detached network interface, and describe instance right so now what i am going to do one second i am in london instance right so my both palo altos meanwhile it is launching what i will do i will jump to iam so i created one policy i will tell you that how i created right so in that policy what things i have covered i have covered same thing detached network interface attached network interface describe instance and describe network interfaces which they have a requirement attached network interface describe network interface detached network interface and describe instance but before doing that right so when i am going to iam right so in this iam you see we have this policies right so these policies are aws policies aws managed policies right so just remember from interview perspective right we have a uh, three types of policies one is aws managed policies second is custom policies and third is inline policies right so when here i am creating a policy right now this policy i am creating for myself right so this will be uh, considered as a custom policy so here i want this custom policy for what 
right? I want a custom policy for my EC2 instances on which I will deploy that firewall. So I select that EC2 instance, right? So in that EC2 instance, what actions I want to allow, right? My first action was I want to attach network interfaces, right? So you just select it here. when I search that network, right? So it is sharing all these in uh, list of services. So I have to select detached network interface. Similarly, where is attached network interface, right? So what was third one, describe network interface. So where is uh, this describe? Yeah, this one is described, right? So I selected three and what was that fourth one? Describe instance, right? So these three I have covered. So in that describe instance, where is that? Yeah, this one, right? So I selected that four permissions for that. You want to allow this for any specific EC2 instance or for all, right? So I selected for all, I created on the next test. Failover policy. So if you see in that, right, so what things I have covered, I have covered describe instance, detach instance, right? So this is that follow all to requirement. So I, I created that policy, right? So now they are saying that if you want to switch that interfaces from uh, primary to secondary, that ENIs from primary to secondary, right? Then you have to assign that policies to that EC2 instances. So for that, what I will do, I will create one role. What role? Follow, let's create a role. I want to select for that AWS services for what I, for EC2 instance. In EC2 instance, I will select which policy I have created, right? Anyone I can use, I selected it this next, right? What will be my role name? PA failover role, right? So I created this role, right? So under this role, as I said that I created one custom policy, right? In that custom policies, as per that requirement, I mentioned that these permissions should be given to this role, right? So let's select what role was this? This was PA5 role, right? In this role, what permissions I have given? I have given this policy. And in this policies, uh, whatever the follow auto requirement was, I have mentioned it here. So they want that these four permissions should be on that EC2 level. So I have created that role. So now let's see. Okay, right. So my these are currently in that initializing state. So let's select. This will be my primary and This will be secondary, right? So now I have to give that permission to my both firewalls. So I've selected secondary action, security, modify IAM role. I have given that permission to this EC2 instance. Similarly, I selected my primary, go to security. I have given permission 
to this EC2. Right. So now I have a permission for these two. So apart from that, what we have created, we have created four subnets, right? Now I have to go to that network interfaces. Let me see which firewall has which IP. My, my primary has 18 and secondary has three. So this one is my primary management Right, these are automatically created. So now what I have to create, I have to create one public again, like I will create only two public and private ENIs for one firewall, right? And as per this role, once my firewall goes down, this should be automatically switched to that secondary firewall, right? So this is my public ENI. So I am calling it at under a public subnet. Security group, I am using that firewall security group. This is my public ENI. This is my private ENI, so I am calling it under private subnet. We did same thing, right? We created uh, one management in a phase in our previous uh, design. Then we created public ENI. Then one we created a private ENI. So this one is my private one, right? Yeah. Done. But here, what additional we are doing? We are creating a HA interfaces, right? HA ENI uh, because primary HA ENI I will call under HA subnet. This one will be for my primary firewall. I'm doing H A E N I, right? And one more, I need to create secondary H A E N I. This will be also in a H A subnet. So basically in this, what we are going to do, we are creating one, my PA1, right? With management interface, right? This is my secondary firewall. This will also have a secondary uh, management interface. I have created two uh, HA link, right? One HA link will be attached with this firewall. This will be my HA1. And second HA link I, ENI I will attach with this, right? So this will be my HA2. Uh, so these two ENIs will attach. Apart from that, 
one will be a public ENI, right? And one will be a private ENI. These will not attach. I have not created these two for my secondary firewall, right? So the role I have created, right? Under that role, I have given that permissions to this EC2 instance. As soon as this EC2 instance goes down, these two interfaces, these two ENIs should be automatically jumped to my this uh, secondary firewall. And on this PA platform, I have to configure that HA so that as soon as this firewall goes down, my passive should be active. So this is what we are going to do. Uh, one more thing here, sir. Yes, sir. One more thing. So basically, how do you provide the internet access to your management interfaces? So we have not created that routing table. Right. So this is this is my routing table, right? So in that routing table, I have to go to that edit route. Thank you for reminding me because I missed it. Internet gateway and internet gateway that will be IGW. Thank you, sir. And for that subnet association, that public and management are there. So now similarly for that uh, private one, H A N are there. So what I need to do, I have to define that for that private subnet when they have to go to the internet, they should go to my network interface and in that network interface, they should hit to my private ENI. Then and one more important thing I have to mention is that for my public ENI, where is my public ENI? Now they should not uh, check source and destination, right? I will do that source and destination checks on a firewall level. Similarly, for my private ENI, private ENI should also not perform source and destination check other than that this one is my secondary ha and my done right so this part is completed so let's jump back to my primary firewall so for this primary firewall, let's attach that interfaces. Currently it is only having a management interface. Network settings, my primary HA. Now action network settings, HA is attached. Now, public ENI, I have to attach with this. And private one. Done. So from design perspective, my primary Palo Alto looks why it is not showing me? Something goes wrong. this is my management let me select attach network interface i selected this so one was my ha zero was my management done okay now it is showing four zero is my management 
वन इज माई एच ए टू वॉज माई पब्लिक एंड थ्री वॉज माई प्राइवेट राइट सो फॉर माई प्राइमरी वन आई हैव अटैच पब्लिक ई एन आई एंड प्राइवेट ई एन आई बट फॉर माई सेकेंडरी फायर वॉल आई अटैच ओनली एच ए लिंक राइट विद दैट मैनेजमेंट प्रोस्पेक्टिव सो वन इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग आई ऑलरेडी डेड आई डिसेबल दैट सोर्स एंड डेस्टिनेशन चेक फॉर माई पब्लिक ई एन आई एंड प्राइवेट ई एन आई जस्ट क्रॉस वेरीफाई if i have already did that yes that is already disabled similarly for private eni go to action source and destination check that is also done so now what else important part is pending with that public eni is that i have to allocate one public ip and assign to my public eni so go to that elastic ip allocate one public ip for that right and action associate that with my public key and i so i will select my where is my public key and i this one done okay so this part is done now let's see if my firewall is up http yes Another five or like this. Eighteen. now i need to take it in come on man I'm loading my all files that London security key. London security key. Let's save. Okay, so this is done. So now let's select firewall IP. Save that private key. Admin. configure set management then username admin then what is password password i am using admin 123 a t m i n 
A D M I F one two three. This was eighteen and. ADMIF admin. Ah, sorry. This one is three load call that private key for login. Okay. Configure set management config. Username is my admin and password. I will say why. You will also not allow me to comment. Let me see. A D M I N password is because it is not allowing me to commit. Anyone has any idea why? Password did not update it. You just need to mini. Yeah. yeah, now it is giving me. I think they have some yeah. password policies. Yeah, man. Oh. So in this lab, we will not go in much detail, right? So we will just shut our primary after configuring that HA, right? And we just will see that if our interfaces will switch from primary to secondary because now I just see the time. So let's wait for next 15 to 20 more minutes. And hopefully in that 15, 20 minutes, our lab will be completed. Okay, so let's log in. Meanwhile, could you please explain me the architecture what we are following once more? I'm sorry once, for this. No problem. I'm, so, I'm sorry for this. Don't, don't worry, buddy. Don't worry. Because once I will reboot both firewalls, right? During that, I will explain the architect, right? So I don't want to waste much time. Let's commit and reboot that firewall. Meanwhile, I will explain that architect. So first of all, let me see if that interface is which I have connected with, which was my primary one. My primary was 18. Okay, so this one is my primary and this one is my secondary. So let's modify the host name. This one is my secondary firewall and this one is my, come on ma'am. This one is my primary done. So my primary, 
my first link will be my HA. Okay. Secondary one will be my. Do you remember I connected my primary ENI, public ENI first or a private? Anyone has any idea? No? Let's go with that and trust if we will see another subnet IP, then we will switch it. Uh, security zone. This will be my untrust. From IPv4 perspective, I will select that DHCP one. Done. And this will be my trusted. And in config perspective, router, I will go with default. Trust and this will be okay. my internal one route. One, one, one more thing. What yes, is the meaning of the dear DSCP? Means uh, these IP we, we changed after some time of how it works basically. I'm not able to understand. So, it. see, either I have an option, right? What I can do, uh, where is my EC2 instances? Right, so th these are my EC2 instances, right? So if you want to manually assign that IP addresses, you can manually assign to that interfaces. What is currently configured to that ENI? Uh, other option is that go to your uh, network interfaces, right? Let's suppose this is my, when I'm creating, right, that ENI. So here I'm saying that auto assign IP, right? If you want, if you have a fixed subnet and from that you want to assign a specific IP address, select that this is my public ENI for that custom one. You want that only this IP should be there, right? So you can select it there, what IP you want to assign and that IP you can assign it on this interface. Right so, now so, I am. So yeah, in yeah. this case, if, I'll, if we enable the auto assign, then mm -hmm. in that case, uh, the IP would be allocated automatically, correct? Yes, yes. And and it will change or it will not change after some time? It it will change if I will delete that ENI and if I will reattach it, right? Okay. And if you, if, you, if you will reboot your Palo Alto, that you will get that same IP address until you will not delete that ENI and attach it uh, to another ENI. I have, that's why I'm not fixing it because I know that the IP addresses I am getting from my EC2 instance, right? So in future, if I will reboot that firewall, I will reboot that firewall, not that EC2 instance, right? And that on that EC2 instances, on the back end, I am attaching that ENI, and that ENI has a that IP address which is auto pick, so they will not change. But in live scenarios, generally organization fixed one standard like 10 and 11 for primary and secondary, right? Or 250 to 253, right? So based upon your organization standards, you can also pick that. So right now what I did, I configured- oh, so, so, sir, sir, please one, one more. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh -huh. No, no, so, so So uh, these IPs are fixed to the instances of- Yes. Yes, and this firewall will pick that IP addresses from that EC2 instances, right, which I have attached. And EC2 instances are getting the auto sign IP from Elastic ENIs. ENIs, ENIs, yes, which I have attached it. Okay, so if you want to increase the memory or something, or if, if you want to change the EC2 instance type in future, then in that case, you know, we can uh, uh, just, they just, the, just, the yeah, just, there. yeah, just detach that ENIs from that EC2 instance. And once you have a new EC2 instance attached to that EC2 instance, that your existing ENIs. Done, sir. Done, sir. Okay. So, thank you. No problem. So, what we did so far, we created only interfaces. 
right and now let's commit this change here meanwhile we will configure that secondary firewall this is my secondary firewall i will only configure my ha interface that's it and It will take some time to up. So let's meanwhile create policy. Trust to untrust. My source will be trust. Destination will be untrust. And action is allowed. I think I have to reboot that firewall. Interfaces are not coming up. This is also not coming up. Go to that device. Operations. Reboot. Reboot that device. Guys, I will be back in one minute.
Okay, guys, I am back. So let's see. Yeah, someone asked me uh, that setup. So here, what we are doing, right? So we again created that VPC, right? In that VPC, we created three availability zones. Uh, one management, one is uh, your public, one is uh, private, and one subnet I have created for H right. I launched my two firewalls. One is primary firewall and one is secondary firewall in management, right? And the HA subnet which I have created, I have created two HA ENIs, right? One for my primary firewall and one for my secondary firewall. So two and after creating that HA ENIs, one HA ENI I have attached with my primary firewall and one with my secondary. Management interfaces are already available because when I launched, these are automatically created. Then public ENI I have routed towards my IGW, right? And for that private one, I created uh, for private ENI attached to my primary and I have routed this traffic to my private ENI, right? Similarly, I created one public ENI and I have attached it here with my this interface so that all the traffic go to my public subnet and from that here it goes to that in IGW and from it goes to internet. For my private ones, they will send that traffic to my private ENI and then private ENI will send that request to my firewall, it will add that and send it back. So if I have not missed it, I have also allocated a public IP to my public ENI and I have also disabled the source and destination checks on my ENI levels so that my firewall should process source and destination checks on the packet level. So now what second, let's see if that interfaces are up. This is my primary. Okay. So HA link is up. On secondary also, that HA link is up because I attached that HA, that's it. So from DHCP perspective, let me cross verify if. Three was created for my private one. Done. And this two was created for my public one. Done. And this was my HA and this is my management one. So now what I have to do, I have to configure a HA. So how we configure that HA in HA availability zone? First of all, I need to enable the HA. Right, so group ID, anything we can select. Let's suppose we go with that default one. Right, and what is my HA1 IP? What is my management IP of secondary firewall? This is 10.0.0.2.1.4. All right. So here I have configured the my secondary device management interface IP. All right. And 
from H A perspective, primed value device priority I have selected. This is my primary, right? So let's select minimum here. Let's go with this fifty. Done and let's commit it. Meanwhile, let's go to that secondary firewall. Click on H A. Enable H A. Group ID I selected. What group ID I selected? Any idea? One. Group ID I selected one. And uh, what is the management IP address of my primary firewall? It is 10.0.0.1.2.1. Done. And priority 100. That is OK. Selected. So, okay. Mantri, you should mention the peer IP, right? Yes, peer IP of my HA1, right? Yes, yes, right. 10.0.0, yeah, right, yeah. If you think, uh, right, if you see any mistake in my config, let me know. We will correct it. Yes, yeah, sure, Mantri. Thanks. Right. Okay, and now I will go to that HA config. In HA communication. Uh, I'm using my management link, right, for HA communication. And for that data link, I'm using my one slash one, right? And what is the IP address of my HA? Uh, one dot eighty. Netmask was 255.255.255.0 and gateway was 10.0.1.1. And my question is, when we configure HA interface, right, on both firewall, right, so the, mm -hmm. the, IP, uh, the IP which we assign on HA interface should be in the same subnet, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, without that, HA will not work, right? So, but in the in the HA one, you have mentioned ten dot zero dot zero, right? And here, I am seeing ten dot zero dot one dot something eighteen. Because that that is uh, for my HA pairing, right? So my HA pairing is working. Of, see, we have a two links. One is control link, and one is uh, data link. So that data link will work on my uh, HA one slash Ethernet one slash one, and my control link will work through my management interface. Right, you see, I have a two interfaces. One will manage my control link and one for a data link. This this firewall is using uh, two links for HA. Okay. But I see in the production, usually we assign a IP address on HA, right, within the same subnet. So, so that's the reason I asked you. Okay. Here it is not showing any config. Do I need to commit it? Marius? Yes. Oh. Do I need to reboot? No, I got that option. So I selected my one slash one. What is the IP address for my secondary HA? It is one dot one two zero. Subnet is 255, 255, 255.0.1.1. 
then 10.0.1.1. This one is okay. Let's see the HJ status. HA1 is down. One second, this firewall is following with security group. This security group, and in this security group. Guys, do you know which uh, port is required uh, for HA communication? Or else I will go with that all. Right. So now you see that as soon as the config uh, is synced, right? So these two interfaces on the secondary firewall is automatically configured as a layer three. So guys, we have a less time. If you guys can extend, then I will do that uh, routing uh, on the vir virtual router policies and the netting then generate EC two instances on the private the send that traffic so that is the same setup right so what now i want to prove is that as soon as this config will be done right so currently on my private my primary ec2 instances i have that four interfaces right and this is currently in the active state. So if I will configure that netting and the policies, right, it will process that internet traffic. As soon as this firewall goes down, right, these should switch to my secondary firewall and that secondary firewall interfaces should be up, right? So yeah, tell me, can we now down this firewall and see that if that interfaces are switching or you want a proper testing like generator traffic from EC2 instance, create a policies and the net config. If you have a time, I'm okay with that. And we do the same tomorrow. Initiating oh. traffic and doing the failover and then test to whether the NIC are switching tomorrow. Or tomorrow we will do that uh, separate labs right so we will connect so i want to finish this uh, active passive so because there is nothing in that right so just different thing is that we need to create one uh, role in that role as per that uh, follow also we need to define that four policies and assign to that ec2 instance so let me so 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 sir uh, 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 it is uh, more happen means it is uh, burdening on us um, i think this is this okay. is this is enough for us um, can we do it tomorrow yeah i will, rest of I the will, things I will after tomorrow huh. because we we have a number of questions over here as well if you will finish then we won't be able to ask you questions okay. yeah you can you can so, ask it right so meanwhile what i will do i will just uh, try to shut my primary and we'll see that if that interface is switch to my secondary, right? So currently this primary has that four interfaces. I just want to check that the policy which I have assigned is working correctly.
So this is passive. Now my H is correctly configured. Right. As soon as I will down my primary interface, a primary firewall, let's suppose my primary firewall goes down. Yeah, this will take some time to stop it. So meanwhile, if you have any question, you go ahead, please. My question is, uh, now we are running on some OS and pan OS or something is running. VM model is something and it is running on some pan OS. Now we have limited, uh, we want to basically upgrade the instance. So how can I upgrade the instance uh, memory without, in, uh, without, in, without touching the VM, running VM? Is it possible? VM is pan or pan. So can we increase the instance? Then what's the process and how can we do this? Because we recently face a big issue because of the same. So you you want to increase the uh, instance, right. right? Right. So yeah. Not not I, I don't want to increase the uh, VCP CPU on the memory on, on, on the, the, on the, the, on the no, so you want to increase that on the Palo Alto side, but not on the instance level. No, no. We want to increase the size on the machine. Yeah, the yeah. You just select it. Just stop that instance. Go to uh -huh. that actions, right? Instance settings, right? Okay. And here you, it is currently not stopped it, right? So after that, you just change that instance type. You can increase the CPUs and the memories based upon that. But in that case, the, uh, are you sure the uh, serial number or the uh, license would not be disturbed? Yeah, because that you have buy it uh, from the Palo Alto marketplace, right? So that is a separate uh, Palo Alto firm where, on which the, your, your license number, your serial uh, number, your all the license IDs are deployed, right? So here you are just changing the backend hardware. So it will not impact. Okay. I have stopped it. It is taking too much time. So it is still stopping it. Yeah, guys, anyone has any other question? So from just remember uh, that what we are doing, right? So whenever you have to deploy a firewall, in our practicals today, we created a VPC. Then we created respective subnets, right? After creating that subnets, uh, we created IGW internet gateway and attached to VPC. Then we created route tables, right? And then we attach uh, subnet associations that in that routing table, which subnets will work, right? And then we created uh, ENIs, right? After creating that ENIs, we disable source and destination check for my public ENI and private ENI. Then we allocate a public IP. Public IP we allocate in my public ENI, right? And then what we did in that private route table, we route our all traffic to my private ENI, right? And then on sixth point, uh, I deployed one firewall through that marketplace. 
Right. After deploying that, what we did, we attach that ENIs to that firewall, right? We attach that ENIs to that firewall. After that, we access that firewall, we configure that firewall, right? And if all these points are correct, all seven points are correct, my traffic should go through that firewall, right? And in HA, we I followed same thing. Only thing I did extra is that I created one policy in that policies as per Palo Alto documentation, I attach, I created four permissions, attached network interface, detached network interface, a described network interface and described instance, right? So once you give that permissions to one role and I assign that role to my firewall EC2 instance, that's it. So now let's see. Okay, so now my firewall is stopped. First of all, see, let's my failover is actually now this is active. So like you see, after stopping it, it takes too much time to stop it, right? So similarly, uh, it will take again some time to switch that. Uh... Interfaces from primary to standby. Guys, other than that, is anyone has any query? Because understand uh, that concept, right? Because uh, now after that, whatever designs we will deploy, right? So I will tell you that, okay, this is the way we will deploy, right? So I will give you some tasks to create that design. So if you know that how to deploy that firewall, how to configure it, right? So then only you will able to complete uh, your design testing. Otherwise, you will face some challenges. So if you have any query, let me know. Okay, guys, uh, I think tomorrow we will perform that same lab because I know that after performing that lab, I will jump to that another scenario because this is taking too much time. From config perspective, I'm pretty sure that there is no issue. The only challenge is that this is taking much time. Are we good to close this session? Yes, ma'am. Type for us. Okay, guys. So tomorrow again, we will perform this lab. So thank you so much for joining this class. Thank Have you. a nice day. Bye.